Welcome back to Phlebotomy Solutions. Today's video presentation will be on forgetting the three P's before a blood draw. Okay, let's talk about the first P. Of course, we know patient ID. Now, we always ask them for their first and last name, and of course, we have them spell it out to you. Uh, we don't want to tell them your name, so never tell them their name. We want to, we want them to tell us, and of course, in turn, spell out their first and last name clearly. And again, this avoids any miscommunications. A lot of times, patients have a hard time hearing or a communication barrier. So if you tell, if you, if you tell them their name, they might hear part of it, but it could be a different last name, but it sounds similar to someone else, and they're just nodding their head and saying, "Yes, that's me." And then we've come to find out that it's not really the same patient, that we have a different patient with a similar name, either first or last. This is why we always ask their first and last name and have it spelled out to them, or actually out to us. And of course, we always want to ask for date of birth, ask them to tell you their date of birth. Again, we never want to uh, tell them, is your date of birth such and such date? Because again, they could misunderstand, mishear. Uh, not really clearly uh, heard, but maybe they heard uh, uh, you know the year was correct or part of the numbers were right. We never want to do that. We want to ask them to tell us their date of birth. That way we can get confirmation from them directly. And of course, we might you know ask for extra information if we need to to confirm what the medical record number if we have it, or ask them to confirm their address or telephone number. Uh, those are some extra things we might that might be required by lab. Uh, hospitals usually don't, but sometimes uh, when we have outpatients coming into a lab and so forth, we might have to ask to confirm name and address. And I always ask them on the requisition sheet, sheet to uh, initial where their name is and date of birth after I confirmed it with them. I have them look at it on the paper, make sure everything's correct and initial on there. That way it, um, it protects me that they verified uh, the information on the paper as well. Okay, the next two P's, second and third, are the ones that are rarely, if not never, asked to a patient. The next P is patient complications. Ask the patient if they ever experienced any complications during a blood draw, as in passing out or getting lightheaded. Now, this allows you to determine if they should be seated upright or if they should be in a reclining chair. Safety is the first concern. Now, again, I've had many students talk to me about this, that they've never had or seen a phlebotomist ask this question. And they've witnessed firsthand patients falling over on the chair, getting lightheaded, and even standing up and collapsing right after a blood draw. Again, these are a liability to the hospital or clinic as well as to the phlebotomist. So we must ask if the patient has any complications. And this is, um, this is very important because this will determine if we should put them seated or if we should lie them in a reclined chair if they do have any fear or issues with blood draws. And of course, the last P is patient medications. Now, you should ask the patient if they are on any medications as in blood thinners, even aspirin. Now, patients come in who are older who might be on Coumadin, Warfarin, Heparin, or even on taking aspirin daily, and this will tell us if the patient will continue to bleed longer after the vena puncture was performed. Again, this will lie determine if, you're, if you hold pressure on the puncture site longer than usual. Typically, we hold pressure three to five minutes or allow them to hold pressure for three to five minutes and then come back and check to make sure that we have hemostasis, that the blood is controlled or stopped bleeding and then we bandage them. But if a patient has uh, or is taking certain blood thinners, then we need to understand we might have to hold pressure longer. We don't want a patient walking out, bleeding through the bandage or walking out, and then all of a sudden blood starts to pour into their car or on the way home. We want to make sure that we have controlled bleeding and the patient understands that they might have to hold pressure longer. Safety is first concern for the patient. Again, this is a liability if we, do, if we fail to identify if the patient is on any medications for allowing to hold longer pressure on the site. And for more information, please visit our website, phlebotomysolutions.org, where you can pick up a copy of our four volume DVD phlebotomy set and also available on eBay and Amazon.com.